guess we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, good morning, everyone. So quick follow-up from last time. We were talking about reaction orders and reaction kinetics in general. And um, I did correct the activity equation. It was how I uh, um, considered it. So in the slides, if you went and looked back at that, you would see it how it should be now. Um, the, other, the other question that you guys asked last time was, you know, what's an example of a non-first order, non, basically non-integer rate order? Like, what would be an example of that? And I, I looked into it a little bit, and one of the first things I found was an example of enzyme kinetics, where an enzyme is causing some reaction to happen. And there's, there's this uh, kinetic profile called the Michalis-Menten reaction, um, where essentially the amount of substrate that's reacting is that the amount of, um, so in this case, S here, we have the enzyme and S that's forming some enzyme substrate complex. The enzyme is then doing the catalytic action to split, to change S into the product, so that from the, essentially the reactant, that substrate to a product, and then revert the enzyme back to its original state. So when that's happening, apparently the, uh, the, the way it depends on the amount of substrate depends on um, whether or not there's a whole lot of substrate compared to the enzyme or just a little bit. So when there's low substrate concentrations, it's pretty much first order. So when the, uh, if we were to look at this graph here, when the, the S down here um, is essentially what it's saying is this maybe maybe something like this area is first order whereas at high substrate concentrations it's zero order and so this portion and we can kind of see that looks a little bit more linear than than maybe the rest of it so this is one example where the at least the order shifts and in that way you know in maybe this middle ground here that would be a 0.5 order or something like that if you had to model just that that portion so just wanted to kind of make a note of that that's um, one example and that really is a kind of a biochemistry type of deal um, so then you could you could also take a look at how the uh, concentration of enzymes the products and the, the enzyme substrate complex are changing over time Okay, so just wanted to point that out um, from last time. So today, mostly what I want to do is just go through some practice problems, make sure that we're comfortable with um, putting in different types of reactions into different reactors. Got a couple things we're going to look at. You know, how do we derive an equation on for efficiency instead of just for the concentration? And so. In, in some sense, it's going to be going to end up being a lot of just algebra, but I think it's, it's good to make sure that we're comfortable and capable here with the different, um, different pieces to put into our reactors, to put into our mass balances before we move on to um, addressing more complex systems. Okay, so with that, um, so I, I would encourage you guys to get out some scratch paper to, to work if you haven't. And first thing I want to do is derive an equation in terms of concentration. So C equals X um, based on a mass balance for a first order decay reaction in a CSDR at steady state. Now we've done this before, so this should be, you know, this is a relatively simple case, but just let's go ahead and derive it. Um, I'll walk through it with you in a moment, but take a moment just to jog your own memory, make sure you're awake, and make sure that you can, um, if there is any, if there are any hangups, go ahead and find that hangup so that we can address it.
even though it's a simple system, it may be helpful to go ahead and draw it just to make sure you are tracking all the pieces. Keep on working if you're uh, solving it. Um, I've put the starting point here in case you need that as a reference. Um, and I'll go ahead and solve while you continue. And then we'll double check that you were on the right track. Uh, that's C to the one power since it's a oh, first okay. order. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully, um, hopefully you you at least started with the uh, just generic mass balance, right? Uh, we were at steady state, so you can put that to zero. Otherwise, you'd have to say 
in some volume, your concentration is changing with time. That would be your accumulation term. Um, but since we have a steady state, we can put that to zero. So that's useful. Um, and then hopefully you, you know, if you drew the picture, you could see, okay, whatever C is coming in is QC naught. Whatever is leaving is QC. And then the reaction term, I uh, usually just leave, include the plus here because we're going to add the reaction term as a whole. It happens to be decay, and we weren't told about any uh, growth, so we have just simply negative in some volume, we have that first order decay. So that means in that volume, we have to multiply that by the V, we have K times C to the one power. Okay, and this is, so it's negative here because it's decay, it's C to the one power because it's first order, whereas that would, we just put a zero there in the, in the exponent if it was zero order or a two if it was a second order. And so that's then our, our starting point and then we just need to solve for C. So then what I do is I like to divide by Q. Um, so each term divided by Q leaves us C naught minus C minus V over Q, which is our hydraulic residence time, um, times KC. Get the C's together, so it's C plus tau KC equals C naught. And then factor out the C here, and we get C times one plus tau K equals C naught, and then divide. Okay, so hopefully if you did have any um, moments where you were just kind of brain farting or whatever, like not, not remembering what, what we're doing here, hopefully this is a, a good refresher for that. So then um, from this point, oh yeah, and I put it up there. Let's just do this. There we go. Okay, so from this point, um, let's solve that same equation but put it in terms of removal efficiency instead. So removal efficiency we can define this new value as what we started with minus what we ended with divided by what we started with. So if we multiply this by 100 that would be removal efficiency in percentage. This is going to be a fraction. Right? So if we removed just as an example if we started with 100 we subtracted 25 divide by 100, this is a 0.75, right, because it's 75 over 100, 0.75 removal efficiency. Um, yeah, because we ended with 25, right. So, <coughs> so that, that essentially means we removed 75% of the stuff. So that's what we're referring to, but we can just keep it in the uh, C and C naught terms and solve that mass balance. So where we have this new term equals something, right? So take a look, see if you can rearrange the, uh, the mass balance that we just derived um, or rearrange this equation to get that. And I'll just write it back up here.
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this uh, first part with you here. So when we're taking a look at this uh, efficiency equation, one thing that we'll recognize is really it's all about C and C naught. And so we want to get this equation, which was our solution in terms of C and C naught, and compare that um, and relate it to the efficiency equation. So uh, before we do anything else, I'm just going to go ahead and say C divided by C naught to get both those terms together and just say that's going to be 1 over 1 plus tau K. From here, if we can get this in some form of C over C naught or some relation, maybe we can um, then make use um, of that relationship there. So we can rewrite nu here as C naught over C naught minus C over C naught. Since they share the common denominator there, we can just split it up that way. And so that's the same as saying 1 minus C over C naught, which turns out to be very easy now that we've made that relationship there. So with that, we can say this new term is equal to 1 minus whatever we solved here, right? So 1 minus 1 over 1 plus tau k. So just a little, little tricky there, um, but pretty simple when we put it that way. Now, one thing I'll mention here is we can do the same process for any other type of mass balance we solve. It's just going to be whatever that final mass balance looks like will be inserted right here. Um, and so if you'd like to, you can um, try that on a uh, zero order equation or something like that. Um, welcome to. So then the next thing I'd like to do is um, rearrange this term to essentially solve for the hydraulic resonance time required to meet some removal efficiency, right? So these are, these are just walking through different steps where we might be interested um, to look at a system in a you know, particular way. So then what would it look like to have tau equal to some function of nu then. And in my notes, for whatever reason, last time I, I did this, I took a very, very convoluted way where I was trying to change from, you know, trying to work with this term um, here. And I don't really know what I was trying to do, but I think it's a lot simpler than what I did last time. So we'll, we'll see what happens, but I think, I think it's not, not too bad. So we can simply just leave it as new for now and that solve that way.
do something else wrong. I got one five by one mark and one five by ten. Say that again. So I got it's basically like what you got there, mm-hmm. except. First term, I got a positive, and the end was switched to four minus. Uh, I did it a different way. You know, yeah, I I, I think that's probably equivalent, because yeah. if we were multiply to multiply the. I did it a different way. I did. I used the top equation, and uh-huh. I went backwards. I did. Um, basically, I just said I, I got C uh-huh. for an n, so it's um, I got C equals to um, C not minus n um, mu minus. Or times C naught, and I set that equal to the first equation, mm-hmm. and then I just ended up getting rid of the C naught, and then it ended up working. Okay. Did anybody else get an answer? What did you guys get? Anybody see any issues with what I did? In in my notes, I have uh, instead of a Minus here, I have a multiplication, but also in my notes, they're I don't trust them. <laughs> yeah, I like I went all over the place trying to to solve in terms of like like using that instead or something. I don't know what I did. That's what I did. I used that instead. And it was actually not as complicated. Okay. So it's three steps really. Okay, so you took. You take you took this, so uh, ignoring what I what I did there. So you took um, this equation, and then what did you relate that to? I put so I multiplied. I made it so that c equals. One sec, actually. Let me go ahead and put this different way. Okay, so you said. I got it so that c equals c naught minus mu or times c naught. Okay. And you did that and by I, separating I was, here. Yeah, so. just did moving that around. And then I'll, I set that equal to the, set, like, the top equation right there. So you can see that I said C naught equals mu equals, equals, set that equation equal to that, yeah. So you put this over here and said C naught equals. Well, I just, since C equals those two, I just put those two equations. Oh, oh, oh I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you said then that. This equals C naught divided by one plus tau k. Okay. okay. So at, at that point, let me just double check. Yeah. And uh, this you here. This, you get rid of the um. You just multiply one plus tau times k on the other one side, and you get all your C naughts on one side, and then they cancel out, and you're left with one for each where that's where that's left. Okay. And I ended up with very similar to that, except what so, I just. Yeah. Did. So let me just try to follow that real quick here. So. We've got nu C naught equals C naught minus C, and you wanted to solve this in terms of C to make that relationship here. So then that's going to be C equals um, C naught minus, yeah, nu C naught. Okay. So then that's here, and so you can relate that and say C naught minus nu C naught mm-hmm. equal to all that. Divide everything by C naught. And oh, I just moved it over. Okay, I multiplied one plus. Oh yeah, yeah. So multiply that thing, right? And then that to the, to the right. One plus tau k. Um, equals c naught divided by c naught minus u. So that these c naughts, yeah. We can factor them out of the bottom, and then it's, it yeah. simplifies up. So it's one plus tau k equals one over one minus nu. So tau k yeah. So then, and you divide everything by k. So what happened then is. This term here, one minus yeah. nu, that's if you were to factor out or factor in, like if you were to fact, factor out the negative in this term here, you'd get the same term. Okay. I think is all that's happening. Cool. Yeah, so certainly more than one place to start, more than one place to work through that. 
Um, thanks for Ian for for doing that. Um, while I'm at it, I'm going to uh, see if I can find a, a real pen and make a quick correction in my paper notes in case I use these again. So that was just more space. If we needed it, um, this was supposed to have a negative there. So I'm going to fix that real quick. Okay, that's what we derived. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's do this again, but. Try it for a zero order decay, um, and essentially from the start, right? Today we we started by building a deriving that um, first order decay term for CSDR. Just let's go ahead and do that same process, and ultimately get that new in terms of tau. Um, for a zero order decay system. Turns out this one is ends up a, a bit simpler um, with the algebra, so it will go quicker.
So if you take the uh, zero order equation and solve, solve that mass balance, I went ahead and got it in terms of C and then worked from there. So it's just like we did last time, but here we have C to the zero power is one, so we just leave that as VK. Um, if we divide everything by Q, that gives us C naught minus C minus tau K equals zero. You can simplify that to C equals C naught minus tau K. From here, I wanted to go ahead and start working towards that form of mu equals C naught minus C divided by C naught. And actually, I'd, I missed a step here. I just realized I left it in C minus C naught. So we'd probably have to uh, factor in a negative 1, because then that, if we multiply both sides by negative 1, that should give us essentially C naught minus C here, I think, right? Did I do that right? Okay. So then my answer over here needs to be flipped. Yeah. Okay. So. I, maybe a better way of doing that would have been to subtract C from both sides, add tau K to both sides, and then, um, then it would be actually more correct there. <laughs> it would be the, a more straightforward way. So C naught minus C then um, equals tau K, and then divide both sides by C naught, and that gives us our new form and gives us that, that equation to work with. Okay, so aside from the uh, um, having that backwards for a moment, it's pretty simple and then you can say mu equals tau k over c naught and you could solve that instead for tau if you wanted to and it'd be very simple. Okay, so pretty straightforward um, just so long as we, we have that in mind of how the, the reaction um, comes into play for, for these. Um, I'm not really dealing with plug flows much yet, or we'll do that with a couple other um, problems in a moment. But essentially, the, the plug flow, since we can treat it like a batch reactor that's just operating for some amount of time we call tau, that uh, hydraulic resonance time, it becomes pretty simple because we don't have to deal with the flows um, so long as we've incorporated that flow into understanding how long the flow, how long the water resides in the system. Okay, so with that in mind, let's do a problem with a, a couple of parameters given. So this is example 4.1. We have disinfection, or the uh, inactivation, killing of microbes, it is sometimes considered to be first order a first order reaction when a chemical disinfectant, like chlorine, is used. For a given drinking water supply and a certain test organism, the first order rate constant is found to be 1.38 per minute. If 99% inactivation is desired, what must be, um, what detention time must be provided if the disinfection is to be accomplished in a CFSDR, so a CSDR. Right? So take a look at this problem um, and start working out how you would solve it.
So hopefully you were able to recall the first order equation we just did or uh, quickly derive it again. Um, for, for a first order decay, that's exactly what we have here for the inactivation. Um, later on, we're going to take a look at how to find, how to relate K when we have maybe a specific killing rate for the chlorine with the specific microbe. Um, but for now, they just gave us this net term, so we could use um, directly this 1.38 per minute as K. And then the probably the only other um, trick or or thing to consider is how to how to draw information from that 99% inactivation, right? So that's telling us that we have our what we end with divided by what we started with should be 1% um, or 0 0.01. So writing that as 0 0.01, setting that relationship up, then it's simply rearrange and solve for tau, given that you have k. So here we see then we've got 71.4 minutes for our hydraulic resonance time. And so we're going to take these same conditions and try it with a, um, excuse me, I wrote that wrong, 71.7. .7. And I, th I think it was 7.4 or something, that's why I put that here. Um, Okay, so we have that um, same problem, except now we're using a plug flow reactor. Okay, so this is example of 4.2, same conditions as before, and I'm just going to, so it, it has all the information here. Um, and then it's asking us uh, to consider how, how quickly or how long it would take with a plug flow reactor instead of the CSTR. Um, and then, so what, what's tau in this case?
Okay, so hopefully you remembered either what the mass balance looked like um, as some solution for a plug flow or batch reactor, or you were able to um, recall that okay, we've got this, a plug flowing through here is well mixed within itself, not mixing with anything else, so we treat it like a batch reactor. It's gonna stay there for some amount of time. We have that reaction happening, and so when we when we do the kinetics for a batch reactor, that's, um, our, if we have an accumulation, it's gonna be equal to the reaction rate, because there's no flow, right? It's just direct um, accumulation equals the reaction term. And for that, we have, we want our mass balance ultimately in mass per time. So we have to take in that volume, the concentration, so concentration times volume gives us that mass per the time. So how the concentration is changing in that volume per time and equate that to within that volume, whatever volume we're talking about, how that reaction term is playing out. So KC to the one power and negative here. So the V's cancel, we get DC DT equals negative KC. We integrate, we get um, the natural log stuff. I probably could have left it as the natural log. Or you know, perhaps you just remembered this part was the solution to the mass balance for first order decay. I'm okay so long as you're capable of uh, doing that derivation because you might need to do that for a growth equation or for you know zero order equation, something like that. Um, you could have potentially started here, recognize that our T is going to be tau, and then from there, well, just like last time, we, we take that 0 0.01 as our C over C naught. In this case, we need to take the natural log. So natural log of 0 0.01 is equal to minus K tau, set that equal to tau, and then we get um, 3.34 minutes if we were to solve that. didn't bother trying to do that on the calculator or opening up Excel, but you could do that and you should be able to, um, this should be the answer to that solution. And what we see here is that 3.34, we compare that to the 71 minutes, um, that's quite different, right? So in a plug flow reactor, um, I mentioned this last time, but now we could really see it with a few numbers. What's happening is for a first order equation or first order decay the fact that our batch reactor system or our plug flow reactor is treating it like a batch it takes a lot shorter amount of time to remove more of the mass that's happening because in our um, I'm going to just compare batch and CSDR here when we start the system at time Let's see, we, or when, um, you know, in the batch case, we start the system at time equals zero. So, and in this system, at time equals zero, it's already well mixed. So we're starting with a, a C naught up here, and this guy, the reaction is taking place at C the whole time, right? So if we're removing so if we have to remove it down to 0 0.01, so 1% of what we started with, let's, let's uh, imagine, just to make it simple, C naught equals 100. So the batch case, we'll say in the, first, um, in the first portion of time, right? So let's say the K is, I mean, we, we were given a K, right? That was um, 1.38 or something, right? Uh, 1.38 per minute. So let's take that to, to mean like 1.38% per minute, okay? Uh, in the batch case, we have then, of our total amount there, the next step, so C at one minute, is going to be equal to 98.62 or whatever. Um, so we've subtracted one, one full unit. In this case, in the CSDR, since we're operating at a concentration of one, so if C naught is 100, that means C equals one, then this guy in one minute removes, you know, or one, 
one minute of reaction time, it's removing, um, it, since it's flow through, it doesn't work exactly like this, but the analogy here would mean that that's like 99.862 or whatever. So it's, it's removing a small amount of mass, you know, given the same amount of time because it's working with so much less. Um, so it's same reaction, same kinetics, but given that it's that that dilution happens um, in this system, uh, we can see then that that, um, that major difference when it's a first order reaction um, may not matter at all for a zero order reaction. Then it's probably more extreme for a second order reaction. Okay, so another problem here, and this is actually going to compare exactly what I just said with the second order. Um, before we, I'm going to read it, and then before we jump into it, we have not derived these equations, so we're going to pull from the table, and I've got them right here for you. Just as a another um, final piece of practice, just putting it in something that's even less familiar, but using these tools as a, the mass balance as kind of a tool. Okay, so this problem, example 4.3, saying find the effluent concentrations for a plug flow and a CSTR, each treating the same pollutant, each with a detention time of one hour. The pollutant undergoes a second order decay reaction with K2 equals 0.1 milligrams per liter per minute. Um, actually, that's, that's inverted, right? The milligrams per liter. So really, that's liters per milligram minute, um, I believe. And the effluent concentration Cn is, uh, excuse me, the influent concentration Cn is 100 milligrams per liter. Okay, so I'm pulling these um, equations from these tables. Uh, and I guess that's, that's probably big enough for you to see. So essentially tables 4.1 and 4.2 are, they've derived the rate equation or the mass balance equations for different orders solved for different things, right? So we can solve for C, they call it C out here. We can solve for C over C naught, or we can solve for the tau. Okay, so there's three things they, they solve for in each of these cases. Um, and these are in table, the first one is C CSTRs for nth order reactions at steady state. Um, and they're providing the solutions here. So. This is where I grabbed our equations that I'm providing here. So, oops, the uh, CSTR one grabbed the one in, in the form of C out, so in form of C. And then same deal with the plug flow reactor below. I just grabbed this one. This one, I think we could actually do the integration. We just have to remind ourselves of what the, what the integral of that system looks like. Um, but we're just going to use use the uh, reference book here. Okay, so th then here's the plug flow reactor and the CSDR. Um, and so these are essentially C equals, or you could say C out if you want, for the two different systems.
Okay, so these I think are just plug in the numbers. The, the one caveat I see as I was writing some stuff down is that our tau was given in one hour, uh, but our k is given in per minutes. So it should probably convert tau to 60 minutes. And I think it's just putting the equations in there, or, you know, putting the numbers into the equations then. Um, and so I'm just going to let the book do that for us since we've got the equations put in there. Um, the solution it provides, and yeah, it doesn't give anything more complicated here. So it, looking for what concentrations are coming out in this uh, setup, 0.166 milligrams per liter for the plug flow reactor and 4.0 milligrams per liter for the CFSDR. Is that what you guys got? Cool. All right, any, any questions or issues? comments with any of this. Hopefully it, it wasn't uh, useless today. I wanted to make sure there was some kind of some practice. CFSDR looks like suspiciously like a plug out. Yeah. So it is solid for You know, it prob probably, quadratic is probably involved. Yeah, um, it looks like. <laughs> so it, Let's see, what would that look like to, to get there? Um, we have a steady state system, QC naught, QC, um, and then minus V, K, C squared. So let's just do a real quick s simplifying for C and, and then we'll probably observe the quadratic coming out of there. Um, So just get the C terms together, I suppose. I mean, we could, yeah. It's been a long time since I've done the quadratic. Yeah, I was yeah. looking at it. Yep. Like that. <laughs> That's, uh, yep. There you go. Cool. So it's that one again. We we can solve it, and that one you didn't even need integration. Just yeah, had to go back a little. Oh, it's a quadratic, and like, mm -hmm. but they don't do the minus though, because I bet they'll just give you a negative number and right. you have a negative number. Right. Right. Yep. Cool. All right. So. Um, I think that's all I've got for you today. Um, next time we're going to get into particle stability, um, colloidal physics, chemistry, surface chemistry sort of stuff. Understanding what makes particles stay suspended or become destabilized so they settle out. And then, um, so we're essentially for the rest of the semester what we're going to be doing is learning some something a little more specific about a given treatment technology, maybe some added context, complexity, and then eventually referring back to these, these tools of the mass balance to plug it into those systems. So when, once we take a look and understand better the particle stability, we're essentially going to have new equations for, let's say, K, um, and it's equal to all these things that relate to particle physics and particle stability. And then we can build a system or design a system to cause them to coagulate and understand how that's going to work using these mass balance tools. All right. Um, so have a good weekend. We'll see you uh, next Tuesday.